Hey everybody, it's Josh. If you watched my last video, you probably saw that I got cut off a little bit, but uh, there were some fishermen coming, so I, I wanted to cut that off quickly, but I was talking about the Chosen and uh, how they kind of added stuff up into the show that was not in the Bible. You know, a couple little stories and a bunch of dialogue and stuff. But I think it really added a lot more to kind of get to know the disciples and, and Christ more personally. It, it really did do a great job in explaining and making you feel maybe more of what they felt back then. But anyway, my video today I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to talk about which is what I was kind of going for in my last video, but I have a scatterbrain and I get sidetracked all the time. But this is very important because I wanted to talk about living in the light and the love of Christ. Or really, a, if, if you're not a Christian, just any way that you choose to see God we choose to connect with God because I don't know your relationship with God and I don't think it's wrong for sure. If you're seeking God and, and you found him, don't let anyone discourage you from your path. I was drawn to Christianity and I believe that Christ is divine. He is Lord. Because God showed me the overwhelming love. Now, if I would have felt God's presence and I would have felt, you know, spite or, or jealousy or, or whatever other sensation he chose to filled me with then I would have definitely thought otherwise about following Christianity but if you feel God is love and God is peace I think you know, I'm not saying you need to go to Christ you need to follow where that love takes you and it might not take you to it might not take you to Christ. I don't know. I don't claim to know. I don't All I can tell you is what God has shown me. But I have heard a lot I think back to my life when I was younger. I think about even right now, honestly. And and I got a message from a from a great woman who um, just had a an encounter at the grocery store, and it, it really um, you know just an angry angry person. I, I only got to read a part of it before I left this morning, uh, uh, but she was talking about how this woman just was completely pissed off. It's kind of like how when you have, you encounter someone with road rage. Um, my wife and I watched this show called, called Beef, B-E-E-F, on Netflix. And it was about basically how these two people got road rage and it just went into this spiral. I mean, I'm not going to give away the, the show because it's, you know, it's not the greatest show in the world, but it, it's pretty pretty good if you want to see how far anger can can take you. But for me, I was giving into the anger all the time. I'm trying to find a, an angle where I'm not getting little glares on my face. I 
I gave into the anger all the time. I think online is the easiest place to give into anger because you're usually just completely anonymous. And oh man, do I get some just bat crap crazy comments in my channel even. Not very often because most of them are from you all and you all are just amazing and just, you know, you're trying to seek out God in your life, which is the most important thing you can do. But I'll get, I'll get a lot of things from like Satanists or people of other religions telling me how, how dumb I am or even, even sometimes Catholics telling me how, how dumb I am which I don't, you know, I, I guess I've, I've talked about the Catholic Church and what they hide from people and everything, but I don't have anything against Catholics. My, in fact, my family was, you know, my papap and his whole side of the family was Catholic. My dad even went to Catholic Church for, for a while, uh, bounced between that and Presbyterian, which is... <laughs> Which is a little wild, but I remember, I'm trying to think about the, the, I did a video, this was months and months ago, and I said how we should, we, we should respect people's spirituality, people's faith. And I mentioned Wiccans. Uh, I can't remember if I said, uh, or whatever you want to call them or something. I don't even remember if I said, or witches or whatever they, whatever they call themselves. Um, but she just went off on me. She was like, you say you should respect people's faith, but you say, I heard the way you say Wiccans and you said, however you want, or whatever, whatever they're, whatever they do or whatever they talk about. I don't remember, it's been so long, but I just remember this, this girl getting so mad at me because she thought I was disrespecting her Wiccanism or whatever you want to call it. I don't care if you're a Wiccan at all. I don't care what you want to do to explore your faith your spirituality. If that's what you think you should do, okay. I personally feel you're going down a you're going down a road that maybe you need to go on. Maybe you do. Because maybe that's where you will find another path, or maybe that's the path for you. I don't know. But just the fact that she got so mad, and I was like, I literally just had, I was like, I, I was trying to f remember what Wiccans called themselves. And just that one little thing, she went off. And I was, you know... I think that this is what Christians have to, not even just Christians, any of us have to understand. Is we have to have grace. So if, if someone is just a complete asshole to us in, in, a, in the grocery line, First of all, try to put yourself into their shoes first. We don't know what their life is like. We don't know why they're in a bad mood. I know I've been in a bad mood for, uh, I was in a bad mood off and on for 13 years just because I was suffering so much. Maybe this person's, one of their parents or, or 
friends or family just died, or maybe their children. Maybe something completely awful has happened to them. Or maybe it's just a series of, of small little things. They lost their job. They're, you know, they found out their husband or wife were cheating on them. You know, who knows? But we cannot take this personally. Because obviously they're not mad at you. You might be... Well, maybe you did do something to irritate them. You know, I know I've, I've accidentally cut people off in traffic. I've done dumb things all the time. It's who we are. We're all... We're all flawed people. But you have to understand that you can't just let these people drag you into the to the anger like like they are in. Don't let them drag you into that spot. They might be relentless about coming at you. But if you respond with complete love and grace and believe me, I know it, it is it is easy to just say something because this, this is what I do. I still catch myself doing it all the time. And I, I catch myself wanting to do it on, on a lot of the comments on my channel. Especially the ones, you know, from Satanists or whatever, you know. I just want to say something and just give a smart-ass comeback, you know, but one that is like a masked, you know, masked in, in kindness. So that backstabbing kind of kindness. But that is just fuel to the fire. You know, of course, they, they may or may not know that they're being assholes themselves. And they may or may not care. But I always try to... I'll give an example. Okay. So, I, I've told this story, I think, before, but I'm not, I'm not sure. There's a lady who lives... Um, in my cul de sac, I live in a cul de sac. She lives in my cul de sac. And uh, I used to walk or drive by, and I'd always smile and wave, even, even before I was, you know, saved by God. I, I always tried to be kind and smile and wave to people, but she would just always give me this glare, like. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to stop smiling and waving at her. What, what's the point of that? You know, so I would just just look away every time I saw her out. You know, just pretend she wasn't there. But after God did save me, I started smiling and waving again. I still got a lot of time for a while. I still got that got glare. But then, one day I happened to be walking my my dogs past there, and 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 I talked to her for a little bit, and I. I was like, oh, hello, you know, and, you know, and she, I might have caught her on, you know, I guess a good day, you know, she was, or maybe I just put her on the spot. So she's like, oh, hello, and, and we started talking a little, you know, just making small talk. And it come to find out, she is in horrible pain all the time. She's got, I can't remember exactly what she said was causing her pain. It might have even been cancer. But she is just always in pain. So that probably puts her, because I know it put me in a bad mood all the time. Having a, you know, I've told you, those who don't know, the doctor nicked the nerve in my right sciatic nerve during my first back of four back surgeries. Being in that pain just makes you miserable you don't 
most people don't want to smile and wave at anybody. Most people don't want it, any, anything to do with that. But I start talking to her and, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I told her, you know, a little bit about my, my pain too. And, you know, I just, I told her that, you know, I'm, I'm hoping they can, they can find something to help her something to ease her pain and now when I when I go by her not every time but most times she she'll smile and wave at me so what good would it have been if I would have just either ignored her or actually gotten snippy right back with her uh, because she was just giving me that glare maybe she had said something to me mean what good would that have done? You know, I went to church yesterday and, and the preacher was talking, or the pastor was talking about how so many in that church were there, but they just aren't, they're going through the motions, but they're just not really trying to live that life Live like Christ showed us we should live. And it's hard, man. You got somebody yelling and screaming at you. Not to at the very least say something smart ass back. Man, that's hard. I've I went through my life, you know, I was I always tried to be kind to everybody, but I I wouldn't, I'd only give them about one or two chances. You know, if they were, if they were really an asshole back to me, I, I would just, you know, it would kind of simmer in my head. You know, that, that, that anger just starts to boil and it gets worse and worse. And it doesn't just get directed at the person who started the anger. No, it, it bubbles up and consumes all around you. That's why before my spiritual, before I was born again, whatever you want to call it, I still haven't exactly, <laughs> when God saved me, we'll just call it that. I call it something different almost every time. Because it's so many things in one, it really is. But before then, my wife and I would bicker back and forth to each other all the damn time. It didn't matter where, in front of the kids, it, did, it didn't matter. Because she was miserable because I was miserable. We were broke. I was just in so much pain all the time, and I still am, but I was suffering from it, so... It just made for one long spiral of misery. And of course, I told you the things with my, with my parents, and that just made it so much worse. And we would just fight and fight and fight back and forth. And I would, I would wake up some days and I'd be like, I'm just going to ignore it today. I'm just going to ignore it. When she starts bitching at me about something, I'm just going to ignore it. But, you know, sometimes, and I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. Because sometimes even now, that pain will boil up so much where I'm just like, oh, I gotta, it's the only thing you can pay attention to sometimes. And he just kind of get, gets out there and... And then I'm like, oh no, what did I do, you know? But that is what you have to, when you are trying to be a better person, when you're trying to seek God and, and understand his love, God can love us. I know I bring up the Apostle Paul a lot from the Bible but he literally tracked, tortured, and killed early Christians. 
Jesus forgave him. They gave him the power of the Holy Spirit, and he became the most powerful voice in starting the early Christian movement, the early Christian church. So a man with that much spite and anger, and who knows exactly why he had it, probably because he thought he, he started his, he, he never met Christ when Christ was living. He met Christ who descended from heaven to talk to him and, and blinded him and, and then sent him to Damascus where he met a Christian who was able to heal him, his blindness. But that is the perfect example of wisdom in the Bible of that blind fury. It will blind you because people are assholes everywhere and so are you. I'm sorry, but you are probably annoying. You are probably a jerk a lot of times. You're probably all of us, every single one of us. That is our nature. <laughs> and we live in this internet world where we're sitting there. If you read comments on online or social media, my, my, wow. You are just immersed in that toxic garbage. I know because I am. In fact, I had to get off of Facebook for a good, I think it was three or four years. I only got back on now because I know I'm not going to get drawn into that petty crap anymore. I mean, there were literally people who started fights that would break up families. It happened to my family. Started on Facebook. Because the internet is a dark, evil place. But it is also one of the most amazing tools for us to have. I'm talking to you right now because of the internet. It's because in everything there is good and bad. As above, so below. On earth as it is in heaven. It's the duality of nature, of everything. Everything has good and bad to it. If something is more bad than good, then there is a counterpart to it that is more good than bad. We are always going to be torn between the good and the bad. But do you have to give in to that? No. We have that free will. And it's, it, believe me, you're not going to be perfect. When you strive to walk in the love of Christ, the love of God, you're going to fail so many times and you're going, it's probably going to discourage a lot of people. It's like, I can't do this. I'm just way too flawed. It's, you know, I just cannot do this at all. But I'm telling you, you can do it. You can. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect ever. You're not. Stop trying to be. Try to be the best you can be. Let God, let Christ work through you. Christ is pure love. And he showed us that God is pure love. We see a angry Old Testament God. And so people think that God is vengeful, God is jealous, God is all these things that, that the Old Testament tells us. But that's surface level garbage, man. 
I'm telling you, okay, I've expressed my views on how to interpret the Bible. And so many people take it literal. Yes, the earth was built in, uh, the earth was made in, and the universe was made in seven days and six days. And then he rested. So tired. <laughs> and all these, all these things that are obviously figurative or symbolic or poetic language meant to teach us a deeper lesson and we have to have if you don't take it literal then all the little uh biblical theology nerds or whatever are going to come out and start um, i may hear it for this for this one for this video too i'm sorry i take the wisdom from the bible i don't take it literal i don't think jesus is an actual gate I don't think his body is made of bread and his, and his uh, blood is wine. There were, if, there are sim symbolic things and figurative things throughout the whole Bible. And he needs, he, if he was meant to all be taken literally and not as a story to extract the wisdom from he would tell us this is going to be a this is going to be a store this is figurative he even says in some of them truly truly i tell you because he understands that when you are filled with the holy spirit when you when god is working through you that you have discernment and you can discern between all of these things. And I know, I know, it's, it's really hard to figure out sometimes. It really is. It's, it's the hardest thing you'll ever do to figure out how to keep yourself cool and, and, and live with love and grace instead of hate. Man, I can't even tell you sometimes I, st I still catch myself just seeing people, you know, if I watch the news or hear of some story of the celebrities being complete disasters, like, man, I hate those people. And, I'm, and then I catch myself, I'm like, no, I don't hate those people. I don't hate anyone. I love even the worst people. And I'll forgive even the worst people, but that does not mean that they should just skate, that I'll let them walk all over me. It is so much deeper than that. A lot of it means you're not going to let their evil affect you anymore. Because that's all it does. That's all it's doing, unless they're like physically attacking someone you love or something, but even but then you defend the person you love. And that can get you into trouble too, but you do what is right as much as you can. In the beginning of being saved, there is a process now god may make it as fast or as slow as as you need it i've heard somebody say it, it's like almost having like a cup of coffee or something and so your your soul is like this this black coffee this filled with darkness and as you allow God's love and light into your heart and your soul. It's like pure spring water filling that, that cup, over, overflowing and diluting that, that darkness within you until eventually you just got the spring on full blast is coming in there and that coffee's long gone. 
but you might have some you're going to have some trapped in there again because no, if you keep striving to be perfect then you're going to keep failing and you're going to keep getting discouraged so don't do it take it one step at a time there's going to be times when you're absolutely just overcome with anger and you can it's going to probably boil over but you can catch yourself before it does too much damage or you can go back and be like i'm so sorry apologize to whoever you need to make amends to whoever you need to and strive to do better the next time maybe you have to go out extra and and bask in god's glory that's what i do here out in the woods i need this if i didn't have this i would be absolutely lost this is my house of worship this is my wellspring where I purify my soul and my heart and I grab as much light as I can to bring out to others, to spread to you all, to spread to everyone. But there's times when that, that light gets dim. I don't have any extra. I have to use some for myself or else just not give away any at all because I need it all myself just to help myself and my family get through. But I found that God every time gives me more and more. I'm like that cup of black coffee under the spring. First it was just some drips. And it was still pretty black, my soul. Then it became a steadier and steadier little stream. And all of a sudden, now it just seems purified. And yeah, I, I do make a mistake and let some more of that darkness back in. Of course, we all are going to. I have addictions. I have uh, vices. I have all kinds of things. Some things I'm concerned about and I'll work on. Some other things I'm like, well, doesn't really bother me. I, as soon as God tells me I need to focus on that, and then I'll focus on it. But you know in the back of your mind, once you're living that pure life, once you're living with grace, that's, that's the main thing it's about. How you treat yourself and how you treat others. You're going to make mistakes, always. Don't worry about it. Just be as good as you can to other people. Maybe that... Uh, saw so many people at the DMV who were just getting almost physically angry. I, I just saw them be, just being assholes to... Not only were they assholes to the people at the DMV, but they were being assholes to the people in line. And I just treated them with grace and kindness. And I tried, I saw, hey, we just need to kind of change the subject here. You know, we'll start talking about other things. And I had this group of people who, and this is a line at the DMV. This group of people around me just smiling and having, you know, living, reliving good memories and just having a great time. And I thought, if I can bring joy to the DMV line, then wow. I thought that was a place even God's like couldn't touch. <laughs> but I'm telling you. It is a miracle when you finally see how much light you can spread, but you have to have it within yourself first. 
And I know you have to work on that and it's, and it is hard work, but it is the most important thing you will ever do. I better stop here. I need to get a little bit more walk in today if I can. I love you all. God bless.